Welcome to the Women in Vinyl podcast with Jen DiEugenio, founder of Women in Vinyl and contributor Robin Raymond. This podcast facilitates conversations with those working in the vinyl record industry to educate, demystify, and diversify the vinyl community. joining us on episode 51 of the Women in Vinyl podcast. You just heard Akash by the Berkeley Indian Ensemble off their album, Sharat. Find more of their music and what they're up to at berkeleyindianensemble.com. We are continuing our international vinyl journey, this time heading to Mumbai to hang out with our new friend, Kinjal Gosar, founder of Drosser Records. We talk with Kinjal about how the vinyl market looks in India, how it differs from North America, what running a record store is like there, and more. Don't forget to grab a copy of our book, Women in Vinyl, The Art of Making Vinyl, at womeninvinyl.com slash book. We were also listed as number 11 on Feedspot's top 25 vinyl record podcasts on the web. Please continue to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. And thank you for being here. Now here's the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about you, sweetheart, though. Let's talk about Kinjal Gassar joining us from India. Whoa. Time zones be damned. We're doing this. We are yeah. doing this. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, you were the kind of the impetus for us like talking to people in different parts of the world because yeah. after one of um after we were emailing, you said things are completely different here. <laughs> yeah, and so yeah. we're <laughs> we're super excited to dive more into India and the culture, the vinyl culture there. Yeah. I'm so glad that, you know, you chose Grosser. Like, it, it's just like, I mean, it's such a small, you know, uh, vinyl store over here. So it, it, it just means a lot, to be very honest. And we like this. I'm just grateful that we get to do, do this, even though we are in like different countries and stuff. So like, just... <laughs> just yeah. adds adds places that we need to go on our on our on our hit list so, yeah next time I mean, you're in india yeah ne next time i haven't even been to india yet <laughs> oh it's you not, haven't no it's always been like really high up on the on the old list being uh a i mean a casual practice or er, er, of yoga for the longest oh really it. yeah we I don't mean, like the, the way people in us follow yoga uh indians don't do that so like no i know <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's one of the reasons that i wanted to that I, I wanted to go over and try it because it's more of a spiritual practice and a little bit more of a a meditation and a little bit more of a like a cultural thing rather than just like a 50 white ladies in tight clothing clothing trying <laughs> yeah. to yeah. maintain their aesthetic appeal for each other yeah so i mean <laughs> I fully get it. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us everything about Drokar. Yeah. Uh, so it's Drosser. Uh, Drosser. And it's basically it's basically record written in the Reference. other direction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, I didn't so, even catch that. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's something that uh so I was having this discussion with a friend of mine uh while coming up with like a brand name and everything. Mm -hmm. And he just he just said, you're such an idiot. You know, the, the brand name is 
in the world record itself and i was like what are you talking about <laughs> i mean are you are, are you high on something you can tell me so that i can <laughs> so i can join you <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but then i thought about it and it's very smart because yeah. um vinyl in its own way it's like the whole subculture has been in the revival zone it's right? not just in india but like everywhere around the world it's just had a comeback and for me um it's like a full uh, you know life coming uh, to a full circle so it just made sense to you know have that as my brand name <laughs> i love it so i started uh, started in august 2022 um it's been quite a ride since Good then man. uh yeah we are currently online only we don't have a brick and mortar store uh, it's just easier to manage a few things also okay. because it's a niche market here uh, it's not as popular a uh, uh, vinyl as a format is not like um, it's not something that you'll find at every household or like every other household it's 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 a very small niche market over here yep. so yeah this makes sense this makes more sense yeah, but great. hey maybe soon i don't know yeah. so you are are you in mumbai <laughs> yeah i live in mumbai cool. i've been uh in mumbai all my life born and brought yeah. up here it's quite a city it's it's yeah. a, a very uh, eastern version of new york yeah. <laughs> so Truly. yeah yeah Truly. the city never sleeps yeah i mean cuz everybody has three jobs too yeah everyone's yeah. hustling everyone's mm -hmm. making living their trying to live their dream Right. Everyone is trying to earn enough to survive. It's it's just mm -hmm. another. It's a very beautiful city. Uh, Mumbai has that. I don't know what the right word for it is. It it just has that charm. And like unless and until you've not lived here, you wouldn't know. So it's it's a very Mumbai thing. <laughs> I know how I sound <laughs> right now. <laughs> no, that's. <laughs> yes. I yeah. mean, it's it's hard to describe a city that a lot of people haven't potentially visited. And yeah. Yeah. Is is on the other side of the world for some of us. So, I mean, yeah, yeah fully. We, we totally, I even trying to explain to you what being in Canada is like, I mean. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't get it till I'm there, so. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> yeah. we're all going to book a flight to Mumbai and it's going to be great. Please do. On our way to go see Sweet Kathy in Australia. You can come with us. <laughs> It'll be great. Women of Vinyl Please. World Tour. Yeah. Who's oh wow it? that's yeah. a very good idea for women in vinyl <laughs> women in vinyl.com also... slash donate <laughs> yeah. yeah also india is very different when it comes to the way or the the you know the culture works over here the vinyl culture works over here uh, mm -hmm. most of the market is disorganized and what i mean by that is you'll find crab dealers you'll find all these local small shops in different places who sell vinyl and mm -hmm. it that comes in like the disorganized market right. uh record stores as such um there are very there are handful of stores you know record mm -hmm. stores like think uh, anyone who is like a registered company you know like yeah that we sell vinyl so there are handful of stores like that over here um i'm so glad you are one of them <laughs> um and yeah um indian music right it's so vast because every the, the culture over here literally changes like every 50 meters it's like sorry kilometers it's like a sorry i don't talk in miles uh <laughs> we talk in, <laughs> so i just funny. i just figured out that you live in canada so you know what kilometers i meters, do yeah. Celsius, oh, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, even if I was thinking about what a mile would look like, it's all subjective. <laughs> <laughs> well, to go back to to sort of the start of opening your record store, were you a collector for a long time or what made you w decide that you wanted to bring records to the Indian market? So, yeah, I have been collecting records for quite some time. Um, so there's this place in Mumbai called Adagio. So that's where I actually discovered vinyl. Uh, it's not been a hand me down for me from my parents or generation or something like that it's not mm -hmm. been like that um it just came in my life when i needed needed it the most it's funny i know how it sounds but still no i um, love it i love it yeah i found a lot of friends there like i found a proper community there right so like it came in my life and i needed 
people you know around mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. it just happened so we uh, i found um, adagio i found records it it was very interesting for me i mean i could hear the difference in the music and i figured i i, I saw how engaging it is you know like uh, so the first a uh, record that i uh, listened to was my favorite record dark side of the moon so i heard dark side of the moon so many times so many times like i listen <laughs> to i listen to great gig in the sky almost every day it's just a thing so um yeah so when i heard the record from start to finish the way it is supposed to be you know listen yeah. to and you know the way you're supposed to experience the album i was i don't even have the I don't have the right adjective for it because it was just so surreal, surreal. Like it was mind blowingly awesome. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how it started for me. Uh, when, I started. What collect- year was this? When did you start collecting records? Uh, when did I you start- first listen to it? So I st- uh, heard a uh, record, uh, the Dark Side of the Moon record, in the yeah. year two thousand seventeen. I wow. started. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I started collecting in 2019. I went crazy during the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> we I, all did. It's totally yeah. fine. <laughs> so my, I mean, as I told you, right? It's it's not been a hand me down. Mm-hmm. I mean, my parents knew about the culture. They have heard music somewhere or the other on a gramophone or on a record, but there were no hand me downs as such. and i really didn't have anyone else who you, you know who used to listen to music specifically on vinyl before yeah. before adagio happened so yeah it's been quite a journey to be honest uh, to be very honest also i i am an electronics engineer myself so oh, okay. you know the whole systems and players and audio yeah. it's always been like a oh wow this is interesting you know so yeah. so why yeah, not yeah, yeah. and there was an opportunity that just kind of presented itself in 2022 i very for a very short time i worked with another record store things just didn't go the way i like i had a different idea in my head they had a different idea in my head so we were like it's just part ways it's fine and i was like wait wait i i can do this on my own <laughs> just like i just need to start that's yeah. all yeah so like well, took out all the being... saving sorry oh no go ahead yeah oh Uh, yeah, so I just whatever savings I had over the years, I just took it all out, and I was like, called my parents. I, I told them, "Listen, I'm doing this thing, all right. I'm just letting you all know <laughs> I'm going to do this thing." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I've I, I've known some Indian parents in my life, and that <laughs> would be very hard, ma'am. That would um, be a thing. Are your, I mean, you and you can totally tell me to just like pound sand, literally, but like. are your parents very traditional were they like what no this is the plan that we have for you you can't do this well um again as i told you it's been quite a ride yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, i'm on not... the edge of my seat literally yeah, this is they're crazy not exactly they're not exactly traditional it's just that mm-hmm. i'm an only child mm-hmm. and my father wanted me to be an engineer and i did that yeah. but i found my niche you know yeah. i found what i like out of all that yeah so yeah and they they saw me work hard like since i got my first job right after start uh, after graduating uh since then they've been just off, they've been off my back they've okay. been like you know you do you we see you working hard we know you can earn a buck so yeah <laughs> go ahead do do well, whatever you want to you know i love it, I love it. <laughs> you're like i did your thing yeah i'm going to do yeah, yeah yeah exactly i did Fair. your thing yeah. and now i'm doing my thing and i'm yeah. doing a pretty good job i mean i survived yeah. like for a um, more than a year yeah. like <laughs> also Do 2022 you... was um, also the year when i like got married so mm-hmm. like for them i'm a i'm i'm settled you know like i've done <laughs> yeah. all the I've you've seen... done all the things yeah, yeah. <laughs> you checked all the all the indian boxes all the boxes great yeah. job <laughs> so now they're like is is your thing is the um perception of women engineers the same at all as it is elsewhere there i mean is there like cuz here we find a lot of gender bias around you know women engineers um and those types of jobs but as that sort of stereotype if you will 
um, being something over there? Is it the same? Um, I guess the stereotype that women are supposed like women can't do things the way men do. It's everywhere. It's mm -hmm. not going to change for a long, long time. But luckily, India is known to produce engineers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. That's why I was curious. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> certain, certain streams, like maybe mechanical engineering is something that, that women don't get into. Yeah. Um, computers is fine. Electronics is fine. But like, yeah, stream-wise, there's like a lot of difference. But then, yes, of course, anywhere you go, once you get into the rat race, let's mm -hmm. just call it that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, once you get in there, you see the whole uh, inequality in, you know, the pay, uh, the paychecks and whatnot. So like right. casual sexism, uh, which is very on your face, sex, uh, sexism, it's never casual. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there are things like that. Uh, I got tired of the corporate rat race after a point of time, just because of this. Yeah. Because I have not grown up in a household where all of this matters. Like your gender doesn't matter. What you do matters with your life. So, right. And you're doing yeah. it. You're doing it. Right? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, no, yeah. yeah I, no, I am. No. no, there's no maybe. You're doing it now. You're, no, yeah. You're, you're I, I'm, doing my, I'm doing my best. So you said that you found this great community. So when you were like, hey, dudes, guess what? I'm going to open a record store. They were like, oh, yeah, rad. And then yeah. you're like, okay, now I got to find records. So how did that go? Where did you, where did you find your records? Where did you decide that you were going to get records from? What is the distribution side like in Mumbai? Uh, not just in Mumbai, actually, I can talk about India over here. So mm -hmm. we do not have pressing plants. So everything really? at all? Yeah. No. The last was, one... Yeah. Like before this, I was trying to research and see if there yeah. was one. And I was looking at vinylpressingplants.com and I didn't, couldn't find anything. Yeah, yeah, I kept so running into different like translations and I was like, well, I definitely don't know how to speak Hindi. So <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know anything more than I knew before. So the last one actually shut in the late eighties, early nineties. Wow. Um I think that was in Kolkata. Yeah. Yeah. So that that one shut. There was also a fire as far as I remember. So there was like it just shut. It after a point of time CDs became became a thing. Um uh -huh. So everyone was like focusing on that and manufacturing wise, India was moving from, uh, you know, the manufacturing sector to the service sector and all of that. So like a lot of economic and et cetera, et cetera, things happened. So there are no pressing plants, unfortunately. There's wow. great music in this country, yeah. but no pressing plants. God damn it. Anyway. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, I, guess, um, I guess we need to move to Mumbai and open a pressing plant. Because well, I'm saying all like... of these people that want to add capacity in the U.S. Mm -hmm. in North Our America, idiots. just go come to India. India, please yeah. come to India. Yeah. Go to somebody, go to India. I'm sure. I like, yeah. <laughs> so we um we import like all mm -hmm. the new records, whatever yeah. you call like not the pre-loved ones. Pre-loved is a different ball game, but uh, true. Yeah, new records are imported. Everyone mm -hmm. imports them. We have a couple of distributors here, like sony or universal so yeah. we do we do directly buy it from the distributors but there are certain records that even they don't have in their catalog so we have yeah. to import any which way so there are all these distributors outside it in the labs and here and there so we import but the biggest problem over here is that let's say i import a record of ten dollars or ten euros yeah. Because of the customs, because of the taxes, etc., etc., etc. Also, we have to put our own profit margins, uh, margins yep. in. Yep. Uh, the yeah. ten dollar, yeah, the ten dollar record becomes like a twenty, twenty five dollar record. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just like envisioning a room in your house being just Literally, like stacked that's what to the rafters. Is. Yeah. <laughs> how do you? I have how a, are you doing this? I have a wardrobe which is empty. So no clothes, nothing that I have to keep. So, uh, you know the. The lower shelf has my cat food and everything over there for my cats. <laughs> <laughs> and all the other shelves, <laughs> all the other shelves have records in it. All the other shelves. So like I have a very specific way of keeping everything. So the new uh -huh. records are kept up, uh, you know, on the top shelf, yeah. the box set. I, I still have the Pink, uh, Pink Floyd box set. So that's kept like on the top, um, topmost shelf. Right. Then, you know, all the Hindi records are kept in a certain way. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just like a, it's like a crazy, crazy thing. 
Oh, so where, are, <laughs> where are the Bollywood records getting made then? Like who's pressing Indian music? Like where, yeah. where is so, it coming from? So old Indian music. Uh, so a lot of, as I told you, there was a fire tapes, got lost, tapes got mm-hmm. burned. So mm-hmm. that music is not being pressed anymore. So like there are really, there's, uh, there are like really great, Indian old Indian movies with like singers like Mohammad Rafi, Lata Mangeshkar, etc., etc. Yeah. Uh, so they have become like a rarity now. So yeah. it, it's mostly become a collectible. So mm-hmm. you know people will spend like crazy amount of money <laughs> oh, yeah. just to yes, get a copy will. of yes, that. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Yeah, yeah. Are you Spend able to? Money. Are you able to source those within India, or are you looking more like to discogs for that kind of thing? No, so um, luckily, um, I have sources, so I do get. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <wink>. <laughs> I do yes. have sources, so I do get. But it's it is difficult to get certain records, and when people come to me with like their whole list of wish lists, it becomes uh-huh. a tough. It becomes a tough conversation after a point of time because I have to explain it to them that listen, there are certain records I can get. But then this would be the estimated price. Are you willing to spend that kind of money? Then yeah, definitely. Because then otherwise, for me, it's just like inventory stuck. It's not worth it. Now, yeah. like, and also like, there's then a conflict within me as a collector and as a business person. Like, you know, you just have to like, you know, just spend that money. But no, dude, you can't. You can't afford it. <laughs> you know, there's this constant conversation going on in my head. <laughs> And yes, there are people. Uh, there are a couple of record labels. There are a couple of people on the, uh, who, who are pressing uh, records. Yeah. But they get it pressed outside of India. They then yeah. manage the whole import, this, that, everything. Yeah. yeah. So that's how, how it is right now. How is the importing price? Yeah. Is it affecting the buyer? Are you seeing that? Because you know, what is the economy like? I guess I know India varies quite a bit. Um, yeah, yeah. In that, so, so are you finding a diverse group of people buying records? Yes, yes. Uh, to answer your question about the diverse group, uh, but um, so the Indian economy is, I wouldn't, <laughs> I don't know how to put it. So, people uh, who fall in the top ten percent, economic, uh, like you know, uh, income wise, are the ones who can actually afford this. Yeah, and. Out of those 10%, there are hardly like, let's say only like 2 or 3% vinyl consumers, you know, <laughs> who like really buy vinyl. Sure. So it's a very small market. It's a very small market. But then again, when I say small in terms of America or something, it's okay. I'm sorry. That's small. That's, no, why did you apologize? <laughs> we always welcome a guest. We star. love our cat friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So um, as I was. Hi, Katie. Yeah, he is a very old cat and he also has <laughs> epilepsy. So he's oh, really lost in his own world. Oh, what a sweetie. <laughs> Marshall, Marshall, see your famous. Marshall. <laughs> <Aww>. Yeah. <laughs> <Sweet> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> this, I, I love this guy. <laughs> anyway, <we're> sorry. <laughs> oh, we love um, him too already. It's great. Yeah. So as it was, yeah, so out of those two, three percent, people already have like their sources. They like there are like these couple of buyers that they buy from. Mm-hmm. Some of them can afford, like most of them can afford importing themselves and stuff like that. So instead of like supporting the local stores, they end up buying uh, records from UK, US, sure. Japan on their own, yeah. and they don't understand that if they don't support us. We won't be able to like import more. Mm -hmm. If we can't import more, the prices will still be high. So like there's this whole thing that we have to explain, but it's fine. It's still working. You know, like the day I launched my record store, I had like buyers because people would want to buy. But at the same time, India is very price sensitive market, very price sensitive. So that also becomes a challenge. Well, and I'm, I mean, like we're, we're seeing it too over here where it like the economy has kind of gone cuckoo bananas and it's records are priced such that they're luxury items now. So it's a very, it's, it's a, it's a very fine stratus of the population that can continually come in on a regular basis for a, for a new record or whatever. 
um yeah we are seeing that too you know there's been a slowdown in the mm-hmm. market so there are people who reach out to me that saying that hey do you have the audio technica lp60x and i'm like yeah i do oh what is it uh, what what's the cost and i tell them and then they're like oh listen you know what maybe i'll buy it after two months because i really don't have the money yeah. and then a lot of people are stuck in that chicken and egg situation what do i buy first records or the player or the system mm-hmm. I, like you know you have to have that whole conversation with them yeah that becomes a challenge you know, so you're when, so your whole you're 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 selling gear too yeah yeah, yeah. we we do oh. we sell <laughs> it's another ball game again but yeah, i am <laughs> very lucky i am very lucky that i understand yeah. <laughs> the nuances and it becomes easier for me to explain things to people totally. so like I end up having like half an hour conversation and end up making friends out of my customers just because they're like, thank you so much. You are the only yeah. one who gave us the right information. It's, I love that. It's true. And I yeah. mean, like, are you finding, put like, I get pushback sometimes in the store for being the only girl that has some of the answers. Are you finding any pushback from any of your clients oh, or customers that are them. like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> So many people, like, I am telling you, it's been quite a ride. Like when I say that, you have to yeah. understand that it actually has been quite a ride. Oh, so, like, no, can... we're here for the ride. We want to know everything. <laughs> we're trying to find the corner of the globe where there is somebody that's like, oh, you know more than me. Great. Here's my money. Because <laughs> <laughs> we all want to move there. We just, we all want to go there. So <laughs> tell us about the roller coaster. We're here. We're strapped in. Our hands are up. We're ready to go. You're too sweet, Robin. Like that's oh, something I that I have to say. Said, out. <laughs> said nobody ever. God. I just did. I just did. Well, trust me. I trust listen me. Trust to me. Women in finance podcast when I'm driving because I'm so tired of listening to music. Sometimes I'm like, no, no music today. Amen. Podcast, please. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you know it I'm happens. I'm with you. No, yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> and trust saying me. that as a record store owner, I know it's. <laughs> I know. It's Sound. no no it's fine it's <laughs> also fine. i am i don't listen to all genres of music so just like so, like there are customers oh why don't you listen to this person oh why don't you listen to this genre oh why yeah. is jazz not your thing yes yeah. there are amazing artists True. some artists that i do listen to from time to time but my go-to is classic rock is metal it's going to be alt rock it's going to be lincoln park that's just how it's going to be you're my sister and I love you. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> but no, yeah, you know, it becomes a, becomes a challenge. But we have got a lot of pushback from like, yeah. uh, just imagine a typical 50, 60 year old uncle. So we call them uncles, but I know like a man, you can, it can be like a cisgender white male also. It's like just cisgender white males and cisgender brown. So brown males over here. Are what white males are. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'm glad it's just that age group, really. Yeah, it's just that age group. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, but then there have been like, even from the community, sometimes Mm -hmm. there's like more, you, they like, they look at you as competition rather than a collaborator. Totally. So, like, you know, there's a lot of pushback sometimes. So, like, the first few months were very tough. But then I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll just do it. You know, it's like, yeah. just go away. Just like, yeah. go, don't, don't, uh, don't ruin my energy. Yeah. <laughs> I want to stay positive. Good. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, but not those 50, 60 year old, um, this gender, this gender is very important here. Like, like, seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, can you speak on that a little bit more, Kenjal? Can you, ex- like, can you expand on, like, how the rainbow crowd is... Uh, viewed and represented in records and record buyers in Mumbai? So it's it's not so you know when it comes to business or you know Mm -hmm. um, people don't really care which section you belong to or if any if if you're doing a good job if your brand is good if you're giving good products great it's great it's the support from that different community, like these smaller subcultures. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of support. There's a lot mm-hmm. of love. But then again, when it comes to a business, if you're giving what your customer wants, nobody really cares. Right. Yeah. But then again, of course, there is 
you know there is a lot of like people view them a certain way there's like yeah. a lot of barriers to still break etc etc um yeah. so yeah it's it's quite a right but then again you know people who are like in the 10% who live mm-hmm. in mumbai who live in urban areas they don't really care right you know? yeah. Yeah. yeah they don't but like if you go to like the rural places or you go right. to tier 2 tier 3 cities yeah there is always an issue ah, and it's, it's the same a- it's the same in canada honey yeah, it's still a the, sensitive the rural, topic. The more rural you get, yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's I mean, still it's... a sensitive topic. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. I think it's the same in US too. I think like the southern oh, yeah. states and the. Oh, oh baby. I think <laughs> you know what the story is the same everywhere. To be very mm-hmm. honest, it's just how it's viewed by other people outside of your country. Yeah, like I mean, everyone. I mean, can... it's 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 kind of it's kind of good because that you have an online store, so you can just kind of like pew pew pew, pew like I. I'm excited for the time that you potentially open a brick and mortar so that you could be a safe space for everybody to come in and flip. Yeah, through your I really hope so. I really mm-hmm. hope so. Like, yeah, like at least in Mumbai, the other stores, like there are, I think there are what, two brick and mortar stores, like proper record stores. They don't like, there's no, um, nobody's going to come at you just because you belong to another community. They right. might, they might do all the, you know, gossips and like, they might like snigger or they might like, but it's like within their friend. They won't like really come and uh, come at you and attack you. That's right. not what happens. Yeah. At least not in India, Mumbai. India, I mean, of course, it's not happening. Right, right, right. I think it happens everywhere. Right. Yeah. Well, and I'm curious about kind of going back to sourcing pressings and things like that. Um, you know, are you seeing a lot of bootlegs coming into the market because you're not able to necessarily get everything that your customers want bootlegs uh i haven't come across as many to be honest like there have been a couple of bootlegs that i've come across but not as many also what happens is all these crab dealers etc that i was talking about they do have bootlegs right mm-hmm. and it's like a very when we source so okay when it comes to pre loud how we work is we go to these individual sell uh, you know sellers or maybe somebody wants to sell off their grandfather's collection or somebody like that, or we go to these scrap dealers ourselves. We uh, go through like more than 500, sometimes thousands, sometimes, you know, like, I don't know how many records. And then we just select like 50, 60 out of them, which are, mm-hmm. I I aim to, uh, I, I only look at like VG and VG plus and any, everything about that. VG only if, you know, the record itself is very rare. Uh, otherwise, it's always VG plus that we go for. So we pick out like, you know, 50 out of the 200. So when uh, when we're picking it up, picking stuff out, of course, we don't, we ignore the boot like the move. But yeah, it's it's not as much, I would say, um, maybe on a very individual level, people like the buyer might be able to answer this better mm-hmm. uh, rather than a store. Right. Yeah. I mean... But, I feel like I would just like to have a few Indian bootlegs. I think that would be cool. Yeah, I mean there is there is this one that I have. I don't I'm not sure if it's a bootleg, but like I just it had no cover. It had just like it just had the uh, composer's name written on it and I bought yep. it because it was R. D. Burman and R. D. Burman was like one of the greatest composers of his time. So um I just still have it. And it's it's good music. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, it comes down to, to that for me, it, it's the same old, like repress original kind of thing all of the time where it's oh. like, would you rather have the songs or not? Yeah, exactly. Buy you the know, record. Stop. I don't get it. There are like these people that, you know, complain about, you know, oh, this is not analog. This is digital. This is that. I'm like, listen, dude, <laughs> if you are not going to be able to tell the difference. Just Every like, just day. Buy it. Every day. Just <laughs> buy it for the sake of it. Like, like if you want, you want this record. I, yeah. I am not. So there was this customer who was asking me to give him uh, uh, in court of King uh, Crimson King. Yeah. Uh, King Crimson. Yeah. It is in my collection. I have like the, I think I have the first press or the repress or something. He saw that. He's like, I want that. I was like, no, that's not for sale. This yeah. one is for sale. I had a new copy. He was like, nah, but this is, I was like, listen, this is remastered. This is 180G. Just take it. Just like, don't look at my stuff. Don't look at my stuff. Just yeah. no. Just no. <laughs> they, they're so upset. 
obsessed with it and i uh-huh. i am so tired of explaining this to you are not be you are not going to tell you are not going to be able to tell the difference you yeah. just are not it's Cool. So are yeah. you going? Are you going to shows? Is there record shows? Like I know you said that. Like, I and I also love that you called it pre-loved vinyl. That's so adorable. Um, <laughs> how? Yeah. I mean, are is there? Because over here we have like crazy collector shows where people are like, "Oh, here's all of my records. Come flip through them and like pay markups and stuff." Are you going to those kind of things? Is there like a weird little record store kind of? Uh, I mean, not not really a coalition because, like, do, are there record? Is there record store day India? No, we were just really? talking. Like, we, yeah, we, we were, were talking just, about yeah. it yeah. before before you joined in. So there's officially there's no record store day in India, huh. but what we do is we still celebrate it, of course, because yeah, it's course. still a celebration of the culture rather than anything else. Yeah. So every store in their own capacity in different ways, sometimes uh, they collaborate and come together, but I have not seen that happen in a long time. So yeah. anyway, oh. so everyone like maybe, you know, has a small celebration, maybe at their own store, if they have a brick and mortar or they like book a really nice venue, can be anything like, I don't know, Soho House can be one. Then there's like different speakeasies and whatnot over here. And also, recent, like, it's been a while, but there's a vinyl bar now in Bangalore in India. Oh. There's been, yeah, there's a vinyl only bar in Goa for a, that's been around for quite some time. So all of these places oh. also have some of the other cel- uh, sort of celebration. And mostly okay. it's, you know, because we are online, so mostly it's, you know, uh, amazing deals and 10 sure. percent off 15 yeah, percent yeah, yeah. off and stuff but where you know, are yes. you go where are you going for record store day like what uh, is your plan for record store day so we we have uh we are planning like a small gathering of sorts at one of the speakeasies i'm still not oh. i mean i'm still working out the details when it comes to that it's a little tough when it comes to like organizing events it's like i do everything like i have to run the store I have to do the package, packing, mm-hmm. I have to do the shipping, I have to do, I have to talk to the customers mm-hmm. and at the same time I have to keep my website updated, which I <laughs> suck at. Like it's the most boring task in this whole goddamn I world. And I, <laughs> <laughs> that's like, I mean, you know, there yeah, are yeah. price changes that happen and like you, you, your customer will this just call you and like but this is for 5,000 why are you quoting 6,000 and I'm like oh I'm so sorry there's a glitch on the website and it's not a glitch on the website it's just me who's not getting time <laughs> no you just need a button that says shut up and pay me <laughs> I know uh, right <laughs> yes but yeah yes. so with all of that managing an event is also a tough thing also yeah. we current I currently do not have a team team I just like I'm working on that no. so yeah, and then you're, becomes, but you're going to play records at this thing too, right? Because so if you're gonna going to book it and play yeah. it, you might you're you're going to play records too, I imagine. Yeah, so we're going to have like a nice setup, only vinyl music, only on vinyl. I'm hoping to keep like a jukebox kind of a scenario, so cool. that like people can come and just pick up whatever they want to listen to, buy records. Uh, I do not maybe call in a resident DJ of that particular. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, when you or like get a DJ, vinyl only DJs. There are a lot of vinyl only DJs, good DJs in India. So let's let's see how it goes. Like there are different permutations and combinations <laughs> of it. this particular event. So yeah, but yeah, so everyone celebrates it in their own capacity. There are certain stores which are huge, like they are huge over here. Like one particular store in India is like the biggest store when it comes to vinyl. So mm-hmm. they will definitely do something like something that will blow your mind <laughs> yeah. yeah that's awesome how does your part how does your partner fit into all of this my partner you mean my spouse yeah oh my he has just been a very nice supporting husband yeah. <laughs> does he, he like records too yeah oh uh, so no he he has his own thing he, he has his own business he works in that he just supports me in terms of like ment- like pack- the most packing records, knowing how to no. pack a record for shipping. No, no, <laughs> uh, carrying crates. <laughs> 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 carrying all the crates at different <laughs> events. And like I, I just tell like there's a joke, like if he doesn't go to the gym that day, I'm like, see, listen, you're doing you're deadlifting that. Can you <laughs> <laughs> like 
Yes. Your exercise is covered. So thank you. <laughs> but yeah, that's, so he has been great. very supportive. Yeah. And he's very loved. He has his, so his taste in music is mostly alt rock and uh, you know, um he also listens to a lot of uh, so he doesn't have a particular genre that he listens to other than alt rock actually. Oh god. Yeah. I've been with this guy for like five years and I still don't know. <laughs> That's okay. That is okay. I mean... No, but he was he was the one who introduced me to Foo Fighters and I fell in love with them. So I've been. Oh, very... that's nice. Yeah. So yeah, so we have that's similar good. taste in music. He yeah, that's. Some... I mean, that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, it is kind of. And sometimes he just, you know, out after a tiring day, he just comes home and he's like, "Listen, I'm going to listen to records now." Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, "Cool." <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's do that i was just yeah. going to talk in hindi and i was like <laughs> oh, i love it <laughs> yeah. so he's been very supportive very love sweet uh, with the whole thing he takes care of all the uh, like so we when when i made this transition of course i was like earning a certain salary and stuff and then from yeah. transitioning from that and then handling three cats and also the household it's a big deal yeah. so yeah he's been very calm and supportive he also oh, helps me through all the n- nights when I doubt myself. Like almost yes. every other week, I'm like, "Listen, dude, I'm just going to close this, shut this down. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not." And he's like, "Listen, yeah. you're doing a great job." Just oh, that's great! Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah he is my he. He's the person who grounds me. So. Oh, great! That's good. How how else does the culture di- like the does record culture differ in so, in India than it does? So see again, um. For, for a lot of Indians, this is a luxury. Mm-hmm. Uh, collecting anything is a luxury. You know, having a hobby which involves collectibles is a luxury. Yep. So the people who buy it, like, so there are a lot of aspirations. There's a there's a difference. So there's an aspirational crowd over here who, like, someday, you know, that's their mindset. Right. Very, very surprisingly, Gen Zs, for some reason, have been very interested, have a lot of interest in this culture so i've had like an influx of gen z kids buying right. I, I shouldn't say kids but yeah gen, the gen z crowd buying records they're kids um, it's fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah but well and uh, and then there's like this very there's a clear distinction also you know like so uh, like what i mean by that is uh, if you're into records most likely you also are a sneaker person most likely True. you also like craft beers so you know stuff like that so, they're like, there's... so the stereotype of that is the same it exists everywhere <laughs> this is amazing it's just like an overlap of things i think everyone wants to be cool in some way or the other so... mm-hmm. it's true i love it <laughs> anyway, you see so, yeah. people we are not different anywhere it's like that's not. that's the that's the funniest thing about all of it it's just like... i am very surprised when you said that you know it's uh, records are being uh, looked at as a luxury product in mm-hmm. uh, in Canada also. I was very surprised because for, yeah. for such a long time, I thought, like, because everyone talks about, oh, you know what, we're going to buy records from the US because there are dollar bins there. And I'm like, dollar bins, why would you? But like, anyway, Chue, so you would rather buy from here so that we reach a stage where we can have dollar bins, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have uh, oh yeah so that is also something that we are focusing on this year like reaching out to other record may not record stores stores mm-hmm. as such but maybe record stores also like let's say there's a record store who needs Bollywood music and sure. I have a great collection so maybe we can uh, I'll take oh some. yeah see yeah yeah totally. see <laughs> so that's something that we are looking to do but then again it becomes it's it's a very difficult thing to manage because. Yeah. Also, uh, when you go to these crab dealers, what is VG plus for us mm-hmm. is near mint for them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's yeah, you have to be very careful when it comes to the quality. Uh, sure. At least yeah, when you're buying from those kind of people, but it, it it's just a challenge, you know, like getting a good record, like getting let's say there's a movie called Tis Three Manzil, so uh, getting a record of that particular movie in a good condition is so yeah. tough then we have to charge accordingly also because it's not easy to come by yeah. but then there are no buyers for that price so yeah. there's like a lot of yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, we deal with that at the shop every day. I mean, and like just people's like, oh, well, what do you have this obscure 1971 pressing of this record from, from like from Japan? And I'm like, no, dude, like you can't no. just walk into a store and get that. Yeah. You want the <laughs> Japanese press? Go to Japan. Totally. That's the answer <laughs> all the time. All of the time. Well, that's my answer. But Manifest. No, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's my, everything that I put out into the thing is starting to happen and that's that's why i know kinjal you're on the path you're doing it well that's a great segue robin to kind of one of my one of my last questions is Mm -hmm. what is your dream for the vinyl landscape in india like where do you want it to to become or go i honestly just want this to be accessible to as many people as it can because the 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 disparity in terms of income and the Mm -hmm. people like what people are missing out in terms of just the experience Mm -hmm. it's crazy like I I would just rather want that to somehow magically go away in the next I don't know five ten years also the indie scene the indie music scene in India is crazy right now so good Uh, (laughs) so um hit us with your recommendations yeah. Oh, send I us, have. Send us a, you know, send that's us the a... problem. The thing is, I listen to so much different, like different languages. So I know, like, what yeah. five, six languages, I guess. So, like, what? yeah. So that's what? Hindi. What? What? Yeah, Hindi because Hindi. Of course, Hindi everyone in Hindi. India knows Hindi. Yeah, right. Uh, Marathi because I live in the state of Maharashtra, so I have right. to know re- that. Right. The regional dialect. Yeah. Yeah, the regional dialect. Then my mother tongue, which is Kachi, which is a dialect, uh, right. from. Uh, so there's a place in Gujarat called Kutch. So we just have a mother tongue. Uh, sorry, it's just a dialect. There's no written form. Right. Then there's Gujarati because of course. Then English, of course. Right. So like, and also a little bit of other, la- like, you know, the main state sentences from different other languages, like a little bit of Bengali, a little bit of Punjabi, a little bit of this, a little. So we just, yeah, we just understand a lot of <laughs> We're so deficient in North America. Like it, it's crazy. I mean, yeah, I I understand that. Like, and also like every every language, uh, there's like this one particular artist that stands out in you know who's who's a singer yeah. who's a great singer in that particular yeah great. language. So Hit that us. that happens. Yeah, yeah you definitely. send us an email with your favorites from whatever. Yeah. I'll <laughs> listen. I'll listen to music in languages that I don't understand. It's kind of my favorite because I'm like. Oh, this is great. <laughs> And oh, my yes. hope is that you all get a pressing plant because I think that'll really help as far that as really getting help. affordable is... pressings. Yeah. 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 There are a lot of, so there are a couple of indie record labels here, which are releasing all this amazing music of, yeah. you know, different rock bands and like indie rock bands and awesome. indie artists. So they really, I mean, it would really be beneficial if it's just cheaper because then it'll reach out to like more people. Right. So yeah. That really becomes important. like a very important thing. And a pressing yeah. plant will also provide a lot of job opportunities. Um, yeah. So mm-hmm. that also becomes a thing. But yeah, it's, it's, it, I think it's, that's like a long way down the line. Because again, the focus is different when it comes to like the larger economic whatever yeah. people yeah. are planning for. <laughs> just need a bold Indian investor to make that happen. <laughs> Like yeah, that. investment scene is okay. I'm I'm not going to go there, yeah. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's it's not uh, it's, it's if there is an investor, it's not going to be an Indian one. I am right. sure. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> all right. I'm sure you have many numerous things to do. So, as a fan of the podcast, you know what's coming. I don't know if you've I prepared know. for it. <laughs> no, I haven't. I was talking about. Oh, it perfect! Just Great. I love it. I love it so much. So. <laughs> yeah. Your custom seven inch record, Kijal, what would be on the A side? What would be on the B side? It doesn't have to be in English, obviously. obviously. You, poly- <laughs> you poly got. I'm so, I'm so <laughs> impressed. I'm so impressed by you. Oh, wow. I have been thinking about this like for the whole day and I was not able to come up with anything, but I want to try. Yeah. Uh, there's not going to be one seven inch that I'll ever make, but like if I have to, Mm -hmm. Uh, side A has to have Great Gig in the Sky because I literally listen to that song almost every every single day I was expecting that one yeah yeah and then on the side B um, so there's this uh, indie band called Advaita and there's this song uh, uh, called Mo Funk 
no funk and it's yeah. a really good song really good song i mean i could actually put a lot of other artists inside me but i i don't think that's allowed <laughs> so let's just stick <laughs> Let's as long as it doesn't two. exceed five minutes and thirty seconds, you could put a you could put a second song. <laughs> on if you really I, I do want to. That. <laughs> and for the record, I mean, pun intended, that is the first time that anybody has actually asked me about a runtime for a second for a second <laughs> song on the B side. So, congratulations, Kijal. <clears throat> In uh, but yeah, so these what two is songs, this? episode fifty-one now, Ooh. fifty-one oh. times that I've asked that question. That's the first time. Anybody's ever said, well, can Who I add a second? Who came up with that question? Oh, oh. <laughs> that's amazing. Okay. Oh, well, the oh we, were like, was, we, got, we were like, we got to ask oh, something. The oh-ho thing is very Indian thing, okay? Like, oh, yeah. the oh-ho is a very Indian thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Look at, look at me. I'm so international. Um, <laughs> you are a delight. We love your cat. Uh, oh, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's so <laughs> Yeah, that was sitting on the cat. Oh, he has a tree? That's great. Yeah, and we we always. I have three cats. What? Yeah, three cats all here, all uh, all adopted. Oh, bless. Cat ladies unite. (laughs) I don't. I don't have a cat. I'm. I'm like. I'm a. I'm a cat lover by distance. (laughs) I'm a dog person. Cat also counts. I love cats, (laughs) but I love other people's cats. Mm-hmm. Well, Kinjal, thank you so much. I mean, really, this idea was sparked by you. And we always ask people, tell us what they want to hear. Tell us what we should talk about. And, yeah, you know, out. this has been a really exciting and interesting journey for Robin and I to hear about India and Australia and share that with the community. So thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. I mean, I it was just like, a you know, for me, it was just Hey, let me just try. Maybe this works. I don't know. So I just yeah. wanted to like just put it out there, and it happened. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so for anybody that is looking for you, what you got coming up next? Like this is where you plug all of the things that you do. Oh, um, well, my website, of course. Yeah. Uh, DrosserRecord dot com. D r o c e r r c o r d e dot com dot com. Yeah. <laughs> It's you like know, race. It's like race car, but not. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Records backwards and forwards. <laughs> uh, Instagram, because we live in a capitalist society, and I have to have followers on Instagram, so like that's there. <laughs> I mean, I feel I don't know if I'm following you. I'm, I'm sorry. I get too right real at times. I get too real at times. <laughs> <Where are you? laughs> then, um, then there's uh, we we are going to have a couple of events. I'm just hoping the RSD thing turns out really, like, turns out well. That's all I'm hoping for. Well, tag us on Instagram when those things happen, and we can yeah. share them in stories and stuff, so. Done. Done. Yeah. Awesome. Gonna, well, we, we should definitely check up with you in uh in not very long, because you're awesome, so. Yeah. Thank this you has so been much. really fun. Thank yeah. you. The best. <laughs> whenever you are in India, whenever. Just yeah. Oh yeah, gonna we're gonna absolutely. We'll, we'll go to a yoga class, right? Yeah, <laughs> of course. Yeah, we will do cat yoga. Yes, <laughs> cat yoga. It's not a thing. I love it. We'll do it. Uh, all right. Thank you all right, so much, Jen. Thank Thanks. you, Robin. And <laughs> I did. I did notice the black Sabbath over there. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, follow Jen on uh, Mistress of Reality if you want to see what it looks like to see. Uh, how many copies of Masters of Reality do you have now? uh 55 55 holy what <laughs> yeah i mean do it because she's <clears throat> I, I i do follow jen but i didn't know about this yeah she has a, she has a, she has a record yeah she has a secondary i mean she has three instagrams i'm just gonna plug your instagrams forever jen. <laughs> um so we have the lovely and talented Den, jen de junio on her own generator then we have obviously women in vinyl. And then we have mistress of reality where Jen showcases and highlights all of the incredible copies of masters of reality that she has found from all over the globe and details like a librarian (laughs) that the incredible differences between every single copy that she has managed to accumulate. It is breathtaking. I love it. It is great. It is. It is like, I love the dedication. First. Yeah. I agree too. (laughs) too. Oh, oh my god i have to check it. i'm going to do that yeah. like right, do it right after now. this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I'm trying oh, to yeah. figure out what record I want to do because I'm like, I want to do that. I have no I time. Would... So I absolutely need to do that as well. It's just there so are... fascinating. Yeah. It's yeah. Cool. There are a couple of records that I would also do this for. Yeah. But then then I am not sure if some, nobody else has thought about it. So but like, because like this is so. I mean, even if they have just do it. Just do it you better. Know? Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> but it's so specific to Jen, right? Like Black Sabbath. It's true. It passes away. <laughs> Jen, it has to be that, you know. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But I mean, as as you'll as you'll know, like she gets a lot of a lot of flack and a lot of heat and a lot of angry uncles telling her that she doesn't know what the <laughs> shit she's talking about when it comes to it so okay that's why so i say now, it doesn't matter do you do it you, you do black side you do dark side of the moon because that is your mother <laughs> yeah that's record. what i was thinking yeah, yeah, yeah you do that yeah, one well, i'll try and find you a weird canadian copy and send it to you and there you go that, sure. that would be awesome i think but we like, have like 75 at the record store right now <laughs> i'm so glad you people picked up the uncle thing out of this whole thing. I'm gonna say yes. it all of the time now. It's like yep, I'm, 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 out, of, out of yeah, that that's it. It just describes them well. Perfect. You know, it's just like it's that true. stereotypical. <laughs> they're not just uncles; they're uncles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, wow, this is going to be a thing now. <laughs> <laughs> we're trauma bonding i love it okay all right okay that's you... the only way to bond guys it's... that's yeah. the only way <laughs> you're so right it's so true how sad um we love you uh thank we love everybody so that's much. listening thanks so much for uh joining us for episode 51 yay thank you so much okay, thank you, know, you. Have the best day you too, Bye. like night, but you have the best day. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back at time is a construct. Here we are. Bye, Kinja. Bye, Kinja. Have a good day. I was good night. Yes. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Join the conversation on social media at Women in Vinyl. We want to hear from you. Shoot us a message for topics you want to hear, feedback, and more to info at womeninvinyl.com. Huge shout out and thank you for all our supporters, affiliates, and sponsors like Marshall Headphones. Visit our website, womeninvinyl.com, for ways to get involved, and you can always contribute to the education, demystification, and diversification of the vinyl industry by donating at womeninvinyl.com slash donate. See you next time. This episode has been brought to you by Women in Vinyl and Red Spade Records. Thank you for listening. Please remember to subscribe. And you can always contact us directly by visiting www.womeninvinyl.com.